today we are going to look at this. I believe this manual was published sometime around 1956 uh, to coincide with the introduction of the Style 7 uh, Big and Baby Ben Clocks. This is the West Clocks parts price list and repair instructions and you can see it covers spring clocks, electric clocks, wrist and pocket watches, timers, and automobile clocks. And let's take a look at this together, shall we? I'm not going to talk about every page, but I will at least view every page for those of you that wish to uh, get a screen capture of this. I've not been able to find a PDF of this manual anywhere online. I bought this off of an eBay seller selling these reprints. I wonder where he got it from. It's got this nice um, spiral comb binding, and the the front and back covers are um, you know printed in in color. I'm assuming this is close to what the original colors would have been. This is the back of the manual, and um, of course this is going to cover American-made clocks from about the same um, from the time period that this was published, 1956, probably models that will be made in 1957 um, but I'm sure a lot of these are going to be the same as some of the clocks made in other markets particularly Canada which I know we've got some Canadian viewers such as uh, Greg um, that will find this useful uh, it, it says repair instructions that's really uh, <laughs> stretching it the instructions are very very minimal but I think you're going to be surprised with how many parts are available as replacement parts in this book. So let's get started, shall we? Of course, it starts with um, instructions on ordering parts and identifying parts and, you know, case parts, because some of the parts, such as knobs and things, will be a different finish for different cases. I'll let you read this to figure it out. And I'll even zoom in here, get a better view on the text. You can do some screen captures, of course, to um, to read this at le your leisure. This is a list of parts that are obsolete at the time that this book was published, but are still available for discontinued clocks. And this is it's a condensed list, so there may have been a longer list available of parts that were still being stocked as replacement parts for discontinued models. Okay, and we start out with the Style 7 Big Ben, and of course this is the early version of the Style 7 Big Ben with the numbers arranged radially on the dial. And some interesting things to point out. I've never seen a movement with some of the features that this movement has. They're very, very minor. Uh, let's go over them, shall we? I think the first and perhaps the most obvious is the taper pin here for the hairspring. I've never seen a style 7 movement with a taper pin to hold the hairspring in place. And the other item that's interesting is the fourth wheel with a shroud on this end of the lantern pinion. All these that I've ever seen have had the, what I call cantilever or cantilevered lantern pinions or half lantern pinions in which the pins project from this portion of the arbor but there is no hub on this end to support the other end of the pinions and so I'd be very interested to see a movement that's constructed like this. The rest of the construction of the movement is pretty typical of what I have seen and kind of look over the rest of this here. All these parts 
are numbered supposedly in the sequence with which you assemble or you reverse the order to disassemble the movement. In fact, there's a little note up here that covers this. And there are some additional instructions on the, on the next page that we'll look at. There you go, get yourself a good screen capture of that. And there's the parts list for this clock. I won't really discuss this in any detail. Let's go on to the repair instructions. This is repair instructions for the Model 75 and 75A. This would be the uh, Style 7 Big Ben. And I think the most important thing to note is the where it discusses how to get the mainspring unwound, um, holding the stopworks back to prevent the stopworks from engaging, and then letting the alarm continuously ring uh, until the spring is wound down. Of course, what you will find is you will have to, as the spring gets unwound, have to help it a little bit to, con to keep ringing the alarm until it is fully unwound. And then you can take out the screws that holds the... Um, alarm bridge on and then and then pull the spring barrel assembly out um, not too difficult of course here is the style 7 baby bend this is the first style of course the the two key version and uh, get a good screenshot of that parts list. I wish you could still get these parts for those prices. A dozen. It's not very expensive to buy a dozen of everything at these prices. Not even a half dozen. It'd be nice to, nice to have parts like that in those quantities. Instructions for repair. Mostly talks about um, how to set the hands in the right spots and uh, I'm going to go over the rest of this pretty quick, basically just pausing for each page so you can see it. Uh, this this manual is worth its weight in gold, I think, just for the illustrations. It's the clock of tomorrow. If you've never had one, I've never had one. There's a nice illustration of the, the movement and how to take it apart. This was sort of the, the prototype. The clock of tomorrow was sort of the prototype for the style um, 7 Big Ben. Oh, let's go back a page. I did not ask the question. Is there a taper pin holding the hairspring in place on this clock? And, um... I'm not seeing one illustrated here. Oh, there it is right there. 36. Um, wedge hairspring. So, yes. That's something else I've never seen. I've never seen a Style 7 two-key movement with a hairspring that wasn't glued in. Anyway, Clock of Tomorrow. Clock of Tomorrow parts list. Repair instructions for the Clock of Tomorrow. The Travel Alarm. Parts. This is the mini travel alarm, I guess, the Travette. Parts list. No repair instructions for those, though, just a little logo here. This is the mascot in La, La Salida. I believe these are, um, 
I believe these are 66 series movement clocks. Oh. Yeah, I want to see that. These are the actual 66 series clocks. We've got the Bingo, the LaSalle, uh, LaSalle and the Spur. And this is an actual, this is actually a series 66 movement. What was this? This seems to be some sort of a compact two spring movement. Um, must be based, a, a miniaturized version of the, of the 66 movement. Not sure. I've never seen never seen one of these movements before. Nice exploded view showing how the parts all supposed to go together. It might be hard to see, but there's little dashed dashed lines here showing you know if everything sort of exploded out. Bingo parts list, LaSalle parts list, and Spur parts list showing some of the parts that are different for each of these and then common parts. Repair instructions. Talks about, you know, loosening off screws and springing the plates and uh, I've never really attempted to, do, to replace a mainspring or anything using these methods. It seems kind of like it might cause damage, might be a not as good an idea as it sounds. I'll let you read that and you decide whether that's useful information or not. It's it's interesting, it's sort of showing you the, sort of the shortcuts that they were recommending to take to make repairs that generally clockmakers would not do. If the spring was broken they would go ahead and take the movement entirely apart and not just loosen a couple screws and try to spring the um, plates far enough to work the old spring out or you know those kind of things okay pocket Ben model 7q and Scotty model 6g some nice exploded views of these Looks like they essentially use the same movement. They're essentially the same clocks with different um, different dials and different faces, aren't they? Parts lists. And just a trademark on that page. I believe these are all wristwatches. I'll we'll go over these fairly quickly here. Wrist bin. Wristwatch version of the pocket bin. Exploded view of Skipper. Skipper and lapel watch. Saber series, seven jewels. These must have jeweled escapements. And looking at the pictures, I think they do. This looks like a regular um, jeweled uh, pallet fork with the pallet jewels and uh, club tooth escapement. Probably a jeweled impulse pin on the balance wheel and then um, probably two, two jewels in each balance wheel pivot, you know, a, um, 
a, a pivot jewel and an end stone jewel. So, so that's where you get your um, seven. Because there's four in the balance wheel, two in the um, lever, and then one for the impulse pin on the balance staff. And that's sort of the bare minimum for a, a jeweled watch escapement. Alright, now we're getting into the electric clocks. This is the Moonbeam Electric, which is a very interesting clock. I had one, but it was extremely worn out, and so I ended up selling it instead of trying to repair it. These have a night light inside that will flash on and off. There's the, the bulb. And uh, it's, in, it's worth pointing out, you know, obviously some of these parts right here, like this unit right here, is not meant to be disassembled any further than that. So that would be considered a, a unit that's assemb uh, serviced as an assembly. Here's the parts list. Sheridan, Byron, and Pittsfield electric models. And a little shout out to this point to um, Greg, one of our Canadian viewers, who's working on a um, a West Clocks model that's very similar to this, but obviously with a different name and a slightly different case because it's a Canadian market model. But I believe from watching his videos, the movement is very similar, if not identical, to what's shown here. There might be some minor variations. There is an exploded diagram of, of this clock. zoom in there to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on here. And there's the parts list. And obviously these are parts for the other models in different cases that might have a few uh, different parts. Spice and Snowflake. I believe these are, um, oh, and the Prim and Zest. These are sort of a wall clock style case. And um, these use a pendant set where you pull out on this knob and set it. And it's worth noting that there's a part number here referring to this back plate, which obviously has the setting crown and pendant. And uh, that that's all considered one part, that that's one assembly that, from a service standpoint. So if you have to do any repairs nowadays, you'll have to, you know, sort of have to reverse engineer how that was quote-unquote permanently assembled and, um, and make your repairs in that manner. But they all seem to use the same um, multi-pole motor assembly with some minor variations in, in the way it's made to work with the different movements. And the parts list for this model. These models, obviously different dials, probably slightly different case. This one's obviously a very much a different case. Um, interesting that it still has the pendant set. Big Ben Electric, Piper, Fortune Dash, and Town Crier. Of course this is the Style 7 Big Ben Electric Exploded View. Parts list. And these different models, obviously the same movement in different cases.
Ellsworth. This must be named after Mr. Ellsworth Dan, uh, Dan's, who uh, designed the Style 7 and would later go on to design the Style 8 and Style 9 uh, Big Ben and Baby Ben models. He also designed the Clock of Tomorrow. And it's kind of unfortunate his name was put on such a cheap looking little um, bedside clock. Here's a nice list of uh, parts dealers. Monitor commercial wall clock. This seems to use some kind of a heavy duty or um, third party sealed movement assembly. West Clock Service Stations. Gotta know that. Okay, in addition to their own products, West Clock's made uh, timing devices for other companies. Here's a RCA timer that may have been used on a, on a RCA alarm clock or other similar product. Clock radio, probably. And you see it says RCA Victor down here. Parts list. Uh, repair instructions. I'll let you uh, pause the screen and read that. And figure out how useful that is to you. Okay, and they also made timers for Arvin, another RCA, and then Helicrafters, which I believe Helicrafters is mostly known for their you know communications equipment you know shortwave radios but I do believe they also made an AM um, clock radio and I'm guessing that these probably use the same mechanism that's used in the RCA timer but with different dials and um, parts to accommodate the clock in the case and here's repair instructions nineteen fifty seven Cadillac electric models and so the nineteen fifty seven models would have probably come out in August of nineteen fifty six and this information may have been that might date when this was made when this book was printed it was very common for uh... west clocks to make uh... clocks for uh... cars One for the 1957 Chevrolets. And it looks like the um, automobile clocks had their own service stations. And we see they made uh, clocks for Ford. And Oldsmobile. And then this is a section on how the automatic um, regulation adjustment works on an automobile clock. And if you've ever um, had an older car with a mechanical
clock in it, you'll know that anytime you reset the time, it automatically adjusts the speed faster or slower depending on whether you sped the clock up or slowed the clock down, uh, resetting the time. And so this discusses all of that, and this might be useful information to you if you um, do this kind of restoration work, and I'll put this, leave this in the video for you to look at. Seems to go into pretty great detail here. And this is the inside back cover. Pride in workmanship. Not sure how many years after this was published they would continue to uh, carry on that mantra, but it's nice that they were um, still willing to put it in print. And that's the end. I hope you enjoyed looking at this book. And um, I wonder who. Um, who uh, I don't remember the eBay seller I bought this from. Where they what they where they got their original source material from? But it'd be nice if this was available in PDF format on like uh, ClockHistory.com for everybody to use because this later um, service information, especially for West clocks, it's some scarce material, and um, I think it's important to have. A lot of the later West clocks clocks probably rightly so have a reputation for not being repair friendly and at least in 1956 they still thought of the clocks as being repairable enough that they offered up this uh, material catalog with uh, replacement parts and it's very complete you could pretty much any model in this catalog you could buy buy it one part at a time and um, so nice to see this type of material um, was put out you won't see you won't see this published by manufacturers today that's for sure that, that this is you know no, we don't go there you know it it all be uh, anyway this is Oklahoma Bridges and uh, thanks for watching if you watch to the end I'm sure not very many people did this is one of those videos where I would invite you to skip around to the part that you're interested in anyway